Okay guys, the, uh, the title of this video is going to be why I didn't go with a crate engine per se. Uh, as you see here, we got the motor sitting up here on the stand and uh, after talking to uh, several of you, um, I've had a couple of my buddies ask me why I didn't just go through uh, JEG, Summit, uh, whomever, and then just get a, a drop-in crate motor. Uh, and in that statement, it's, a, it's kind of a long explanation, but uh, the the first and foremost thing I can typically say is typically uh, whenever you have a motor that you're building, um, you need to have some set parameters, some set goals. Uh, you know, for a Ford Bronco, we're probably not necessarily going to want this truck to run nines or tens in the quarter mile. Uh, and a specific goal for me was to have it have about 350 horsepower and uh, be able to turn 35 inch tall tires. And uh, so a lot of the uh, the applications that are in a JEGS catalog are not are not truck applicable uh, for lack of better words but typically those motors are going to have a, uh, a high rpm cam in them uh, especially 347 stroke are typically probably designed for a mustang uh, you know a uh, a mercury comet something of that sort so uh not only that uh the issue that we run into with dropping this motor into a pickup truck is that whenever you order those things off of jegs uh Summit Race, and they're typically going to come with a, a car oil pan. Uh, sometimes they're going to come with a, a carbureted intake manifold. Uh, both are items that you're paying for that you can't really use. And then lots of times, especially with these Fords, they're going to come with a, uh, a mechanical drive uh, fuel pump on the front for the front cover, which you can't see behind all the accessories and all the uh, disorganized uh, wires that I have sitting on top of this engine. Uh, but but really uh, what I wanted to do with this motor is uh, I got a lot of people that uh, just about anybody really and uh, can, can can drop a motor into any type of truck and plug up a one bunch of wires and make it run but what, what the real goal up with this uh, was to actually plan a build build it out here right here in the garage and just kind of have some fun with it because we're not really in a hurry to, uh, to finish this thing I'm not this is not a truck that we're where you're looking to sell or anything. So kind of piece this thing together. And uh, so what we kind of got here is, uh, you know, we went with a 347 stroker bottom end. Uh, it's balanced and blueprinted. It's got hyperconnected pistons. I think I said that correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, we didn't go forge pistons because uh, the bores have to be individually sized for those. And just, we're not running a power adder. Uh, this is probably a 10 to one compression motor. Uh, so really no no need for that. Uh, we did run with, with a truck cam. Uh, I think like I said in the previous video made for some torque. Uh, we did go with a cheaper uh, SVE late model restoration head on this on this uh, engine build. Uh, the reason we went with that head is you know it, I just couldn't justify spending you know fifteen hundred dollars for a set of AFR heads. Uh, you know and, and the motor and the cam weren't going to really support five six hundred horsepower. So it just really didn't make sense. Uh, to spend that kind of money on the heads. Uh, as you can kind of see here, we got the whole thing kind of taped off here. We got the front drive accessories on there. Um, the, uh, the the biggest confusion that uh, <clears throat> that we had when building this motor was uh, when I asked the guy to have it built, uh, Petite's Racing over there in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Uh, I asked him to balance it to 50, 50 ounces in balance. And uh, yesterday, I was looking at the balance sheet, it says 50. And then the parts that came with it are actually 28 ounce, ounce parts, excuse me. And uh, so I called over there and uh, he said that uh, what they ended up doing uh, to just go buy what they had balanced it to uh, is the parts that are on it, uh, 28 ounces. And so that's what we're going to end up doing. So um, <clears throat> long story short, uh, so we got it all here ready to put together. Um, you know, another question that uh, I've always been asked is, you know, why don't you go 351? Would you go 408? Uh, wouldn't it be cheaper just to go 351? Yes and no, right? So the truck intake manifold, the 351 and the 302 intake manifolds are different on it. So with a 302 truck intake manifold, it actually flows better than the 351 intake manifold. So if we would have gone to the 351, we would have had to spend probably another 700 to 900 bucks for an Edelbrock uh, high-rise intake on it, um, the EFI high-rise intake. And so I really didn't want to do that. Uh, just wasn't part of what I was trying to accomplish with the truck. Uh, you know, really just looking to, you know, have this truck to kind of cruise around and, and maybe go, 
go jump some hills with it and maybe you'll get some ice cream every now and then with it. Uh, but overall, um, this is the build. Uh, we got everything in place. We got the, a lot of new parts have been ordered. Uh, so we got a new flywheel that's been ordered for it, a new flex plate. Um, another issue is if we ran these tall valve covers cause I liked them and they were pretty in blue. And, and so one thing I've started to learn with, uh, building building motors is that we're for every action there's a consequence and so then uh, now the injector rail won't fit on there so uh, we're going to have to get a uh, an aftermarket injector rail that sits up here on top of the injectors uh, so uh, that's one thing that we're going to have to do i originally thought that we were going to also have to get a uh, uh, an intake spacer for this truck uh, the truck manifold which i got sitting down here but we actually put it on there the other night and it actually sits up there and it actually clears the valve cover surprisingly uh, so pretty much everything has been uh, assembled on this motor. Uh, you know, we got comp 1.6 roller rockers in it and got Ford racing uh, roller lifters in it. I mean, it's all been uh, prepped and it's pretty much ready to drop in. ARP studs, uh, you name it, it's in there. So uh, one thing about this build is that, you know, I didn't realize whenever I built the truck that uh, whenever you get something that's 30 years old, um, everything is pretty much wore out in it. So, I mean, literally every system has just about been had to be rebuilt in it. So you got new, new, new water pump, you got new, new power steering, new hoses. Uh, we've got a new three core aluminum radiator sitting over there. Uh, new harmonic balancer. Um, you have a new alternator, new starter. Uh, everything will be practically all brand new sensors on it. So, um, it's one of the reasons this project is also taking so long. It's just because uh, literally had to replace everything on it. But um, yeah, just uh, you know, back to that crate engine question that we were talking about earlier. Um, if you look at a crate engine like this, um, I think they used to have one that was all rigged up with the uh, the truck at a Brock intake and everything, and that thing was running like nine, ten thousand dollars, and you can get like a three forty seven stroker uh, long block. Uh, and it's, t it's still probably going to run you about five, six thousand dollars and without getting into a bunch of it I've got a fraction of that in this motor uh, So that's one of the reasons uh, I just want to make a video on this and just kind of highlight some of the reasons that uh, I did not go with the crate engine But uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching